Hello, everyone, and welcome to Jump Up Supercast, the only podcast on the internet where we're starring in NBC's new esports sitcom, The Squad. I'm Will, and joining me this week, Brandon. First, first, Ills. Can I be Ilhan Omar? And Saf. I'm the goalie. What? <laughs> What? The goalie. What you Zach, talking do you about? Do you know Zach? how esports work? Oh, he's. <laughs> I said esports. Why would I say regular sports? I don't know. No, that is. Wait, is there a sitcom about esports? Yeah, they just announced it yesterday. NBC's The Squad, a sitcom produced by Chuck Lorre of The Big Bang Theory and Two and a Half oh. Men fame. Oh, oh no. that sounds e-sports. terrible. I don't like this at all. Uh, Seth, you should have said you were going to be AOC. Oh. Alright, let's do this again. Let's do the intro Whatever. again. Whatever. Fuck you. We're not. We're, we're sticking uh, with it. Uh, I'm so glad that I'm first. Yeah. Be gone, Muzzy. Wait, Be gone, I have a public service announcement. The oh, last God. Muzzy is in captivity. The galaxy is at peace. <laughs> <laughs> um. So, you know, uh, we will say the Muzumil's appearance has been delayed along with a lot of video games this week that have also been delayed in the news. Ayo. Oh, Ayo. What a That's pro. the quality transition I was waiting for. <laughs> mhm. Mm-hmm. So, let's start off with I would say the big singular one, right? The Last of Us 2. You may recall almost a month ago to the day of us recording this, we talked about, "Hey man, Last of Us got a, you know, say to play, got a release date in that trailer. Why are we talking about it again? Cuz it that release date didn't stick." We have a a three-month delay for The Last of Us Part 2 from February 21st to May 29th, 2020. Um, What the fuck could have possibly happened within a month? That's a good question, and that's Did sort something of something gets set on fire. <laughs> <laughs> well, well, uh, we we had a blog post from Neil Druckmann, who's the primary writer and director for The Last of Us Part Two, and he specifically name dropped polish as the main thing. Right, they were looking at it, they thought we can't get it to the level we sort of want to as a studio in the time frame that we would have if it came out in February. So we decided to add on the three months, right? Um, and I do think it's interesting, sort of on on a First things first, how do we feel about just them moving it, period? How, about the new day? Feeling good. I'm, I like it. Because uh, my initial reaction was, wowee, I got a lot of video games to play. And, you know, delaying it till May? Who knows what's coming out in May? Nobody really other than this game now. So it's like, oh, nice. You know, now I got a little time to, to play some Animal Crossing and some, I don't know, maybe Final Fantasy VII if somebody puts a gun to my head. So <laughs> I, have, I have some time, you know? Uh, I do I'm not like, I like it. I do not I mean, believe you for a second when you say you're gonna play Final Fantasy VII. Well, of there course is not. No fucking way. <laughs> I said maybe. Yeah, maybe. Don't maybe give me false so. hope. Uh, but I, in the immortal words of Miyamoto, a bad game is bad forever. It's true. Um, and so, uh, and so, I think that, like you said, um, there's an interesting aspect, which is, excuse me, um, I forget what his name is. There's a, there's a game developer that's frequently on Twitter. And he sort of said a tweet that was like, you don't know, because I think generally the reaction to this has actually been not that much anger in a lot of sort of like, okay, give it time, let it cook, you know? Mm -hmm. Um, And he sort of talked about how much that means, like, for development on the whole, right? Like, if suddenly the dynamic of game delays is no longer, what were you doing, you idiots, you you morons, and sort of like, okay, it comes out when it comes out as like an audience response, that then makes it easier for comp- for you know developers to come to their publishers and say, hey, we need to push this back a little bit, right? Wow. Consumers wow. actually being reasonable for once. Holy shit. It, it is a Christmas <laughs> Are we miracle. Still gamers? Halloween miracle. <laughs> uh, what does this community turn to? <laughs> no. Um, and this is and this is a thing also interesting because Naughty Dog is actually not a stranger to this, right? Uncharted 2 got delayed two weeks. The ver- original Last of Us got delayed two weeks. But three months is certainly a larger time frame than that. Um, but Naughty Dog is also a company that is sort of notorious. Um, there's been multiple articles about it over the years for having a, a strong crunch culture, right? And so um, sort of, I mean, the hope, you know, the best case scenario is that they get to polish this game up and they don't have to kill themselves as much, you know? Right. Yeah. yeah. Um, and I think it's also interesting because it's insight into game development, right? Like sort of you said what happened in the last month. It's like sometimes these are, you know, Neil Druckmann has worked on 
I think like close to a dozen video games. Even still, it can be very hard to predict how long this stuff can take sometimes. Um, and it's sort of just a reminder that like game development's hard, you know? <laughs> yeah. Um, yeah but, I mean, he may not have set the original schedule in the first place, right? So it yeah. might be like the higher up to do that shit. And, mm-hmm. you know, you have to coax them into, you know, reality. Yeah. What's feasible. Um, a side effect of this, too. Uh, I'm contractually, ob- ob- uh, you know, I have to say his name. Um, Jason Schreier followed up saying that this also had a ripple effect with Ghost of Tsushima, which was originally going to be in the first half of 2020, according to their internal schedule. But because this is now in May, that's, you know, right at the end of the first half of 2020, they're going to push that further down the year so it doesn't get crowded out, you know? Mm-hmm. Um, which I think is interesting, right? And that, that will put it very close to PS5 launch, presumably, right? I mean, Sony said fall 2020 is when we're going to see PS5. Um, and so I guess the question is, do you... We know that, there, that these future consoles are going to be backwards compatible, right? Right. Um, do we think that that changes the way that later gen games are perceived? Because... If you're getting a PS, if you, you know, if the thought is Ghost of Tsushima just came out, Last of Us just came out, I want to buy a PS4, or I could wait five months and just get it with my PS5. Do you think that changes sort of calculations no. for people? No, I don't think no. so. so. So many people want shit day one that they're gonna buy it <laughs> like immediately. Sure. Nobody's gonna be patient enough for that strategy or whatever. Yeah, yeah. They're gonna. It's gonna be a matter of. I feel as though it's gonna be a matter of like. Um, Unless they promise some sort of like improvement of some kind, which I doubt they could, uh, I don't think people would be waiting until like a PS5 to get these games. Well, don't get it twisted; those games will be remastered for PS5. So. Oh no, definitely, yeah. But <laughs> uh, yeah, I, mean, I think I think that'll be interesting too, right? Like, when do you do those remasters for PS5 when you could stick the PS4 disc in the console, right? I think that'll be interesting too. Mm-hmm. Um. But we'll see. Uh, but like I said, you know, largely I think the response has been understanding and pretty cool, which we don't get this summer. We've not got to say that a lot about gamers, right? So uh, that, like I said, that was nice. Yeah. <laughs> or ever. True. Yeah. Um, then brought up another set of delays, basically an hour after the Last of Us stuff gets announced. Uh, Ubisoft did an inv- uh, investor call, right? And in that investor call, they said that Watch Dogs Legion, Gods and Monsters, and Ghost Recon Quarantine, which were all set to come out in the first quarter of uh, 2020, uh, Q4 of the fiscal year, which is up until April, are all now delayed into the fiscal year 2020, uh, which basically means that, uh, and that specifically Gods and Monsters and Ghost Recon, uh, excuse me, and Watch Dogs are both going to be in the second half of the year. So that's, I mean, a six month delay for both those games at a minimum, probably. Hmm. Um, and that's interesting because like we don't oftentimes get three different games from three different studios all delayed at the same time. And so I sort of like my first question is, do you think this is an indicator of like larger company structural changes that are going on with Ubisoft? Do you think it's just a weird coincidence that all three of these games needed more time in the oven? I, I honestly have no idea. I mean, I don't think we've seen very much of God's Monsters in the first place, right? Have no, we? we did not. We have seen no gameplay of God's and Monsters. Yeah. <laughs> so I, maybe that game needed more time in the oven. I don't know mm-hmm. about Watch Dogs Legion. That game looked pretty complete last time we saw it. Obviously, yeah. those were just trailers, but, you know, mm-hmm. I don't know why, but, you know, yeah. Um, and then I think it's also interesting. Uh, they also said Ghost Re- Skull and Bones. You might remember that game. Originally, it got announced like around the same time as Sea of Thieves. So they thought like, oh, they're going to be rivals. That game uh, is not coming out until after April 1st, 2021 is all they said. They said what? it's still in development. Is that a next gen game at this point or some shit? I mean, it would p- probably have to be right. I mean, we would be five months into next gen. Yeah. You know? <laughs> uh, what a, that game I- was announced <laughs> forever ago, dog. It was. Well, the, then they just the stopped releasing like Just Dance games for the Wii. Maybe it'll be like that situation. No, they, they still, really they still uh, are. They, oh my stop? god! <laughs> it never uh, stopped. No, uh, it's still why would you? If, you still, if, the, if they don't change engine, I mean, stick with it, right? Just put the songs in there. Um, but I do think it's interesting. Somewhere is still buying Just Dance, and it freaks me out. Yeah, I've never met a single person who's bought Just Dance. But and somebody I never has wanted. to be doing it or they wouldn't justify me. Yeah, I don't understand it. Yeah. Well, these people who love dancing so much. Fuck out of here. Like, I get it when it first came out, but we're 10 years in now. Yeah, that's the wildest thing. <laughs> um, Is it gonna like, outlast PS2 for, like, the most official releases? Like, for the longest? 
That's gonna be hard. It's gonna be hard. FIFA on PS2 went until like this gen, dude. Yeah, it's, uh, it's wild. Um, but yeah, so that'll be a thing. Uh, I do think it's interesting. Skull and Bones. Just a little bit of backstory because I looked into the development of it. Originally, it was going to be a, a versus multiplayer only game, uh, where you were only on the boats. Then they said, okay, we're gonna make it where there's a story mode where you're on the boats. The year uh, next year at the E3. Then the year after that, at this E3, they said also we're gonna have po- parts where you're walking around and like adventuring. I have no hope so, for this game with with that many changes. I don't know. And then, yeah, and then next year they'll say it's just gonna be Assassin's Creed Four. <laughs> I guess mean, it's just slowly been turning into Assassin's Creed 4, right? Like, now yeah. it's just going to be that sequel that we all kind of wanted, hopefully. But, like we said, you know, hard to be inspired confidence in this thing. Mm. Um, and then no one knew on Beyond Good and Evil 2. They just didn't say anything. Well, um, I don't really care anymore now, anyway. Well, it's a prequel. Thing that- <laughs> yeah, I don't know. Now that it's, I don't know. It's just, I don't know. It's, I have, uh, like, a 1% hope now. Yeah. I, I do think it's funny that you mentioned it earlier because they did specifically mention something, which is all of those games, Ghost Recon, uh, Gods and Monsters, and Watch Dogs, are all going to be receiving patches to optimize them for next generation consoles after they launch. Mm-hmm. So, uh, basically saying that, you know, we'll be able, like we sort of mentioned with PS5 stuff that they mentioned so far, loading times would probably be one of the clear things that would get patched in, right, to utilize the SSD that is on the new console. Um, so I think that will be interesting, right, that there are these last-gen games that will be able to get patches that make them just run better if you stick them in your new machine. Almost like, Do you think, like um, Red Dead for this gen. Sure, yeah. Do you think there are going to be any PS5 exclusive games, or is it just going to be <laughs> PS4 exclusives? I mean, well, not exclusives, but PS4 games that people are playing when the PS5 launches. I mean, we saw this gen, right? There was there was a real like year and a half where everything was also still on 360 and PS3, mm-hmm. yeah. and I expect that to sort of continue this generation yeah. or this next gen. That doesn't surprise me, especially especially sports games like those will go for like another yeah. like three years. Mm. Yeah, and and it makes sense for companies that you know while these consoles are going to build up their install bases, you you have it on the PS5, but you also have it on the PS4 where there's a hundred million of those things out there, right? So right. someone's going to probably pick it up. Um, but then that is you know uh, that was interesting, and it sort of also in that same conference call they mentioned uh, we you know we brag on Ubisoft several times this year, but they underperformed a lot of their like what they intended for sales this year. Uh, part of it was three games that were planned to come out in this fiscal year they just pushed but so sort of their two big titles were ghost recon breakpoint and division two both of which underperformed uh, they said ghost recon breakpoint in particular um was a, was a very large drop off after the first game right and even division two which is the sixth best-selling game of the year in america still under what they wanted it to be hmm. um, oh, interesting I, and I guess so the I, dog didn't sell it at 83 i guess it didn't <laughs> He, uh, he tried think, his best, man. He tried his best. Yeah, um, I do think reviewed well, or were they just was it just no Ghost Recon Breakpoint? Well, Division reviewed well. Ghost Recon Breakpoint had a bunch of microtransaction stuff that was pretty aggressive, uh, especially at launch. Why? That got some bad God. press. Why? Why? It's the um, year of our Lord, twenty nineteen, and why are we still doing this? Well, that, it won't be the last time we <laughs> you ask that question because we got another <laughs> thing down the news. Oh, but yeah. I do think it's interesting. <laughs> Uh, these are both games that are direct sequels to, like we we mentioned before, Ghost Recon Wildlands, right? Was like was did very well, and so did Division One. Had like the first biggest month for a new IP ever for Ubisoft, right? Mm. But both of them were games as service games, right? They were games that they intended you to play for years after. Do you think the fact that people had been playing these things up to like getting new content like six months ago hampers the excitement for a sequel? Yeah, absolutely. Yeah, probably. Yeah. Yeah. Too soon, you know. It's I don't know if you're gonna if you're gonna support something for that long, which is good. Why don't you just keep mm-hmm. like I don't know, just keep supporting it, or either that or like cut it off. Like I don't know, have some space, you know. I don't know, just it yeah. doesn't seem right. You know, people that have were just playing it and maybe still are are like, well, you know, what's the point of upgrading? Yeah. I mean, Adam Sessler, you might remember him from X-Play. He, he had oh, yeah. a phrase that I still remember a lot, which is, how can I miss you if you never leave, right? And, like, <laughs> with some video game franchises, a little bit of time makes people want to come back, right? I think that yeah. Borderlands, despite taking seven years, benefited from that, you know? Like, people wanted Borderlands back in their life. True. Mm-hmm. Um, Same Kingdom Hearts and stuff like that, Final Fantasy 15. 
Shit like yeah, that. Yeah, yeah, I guess like um, yeah, because that game sold a lot, right? Borderlands Three. Yeah, yeah. It, it it is, I think, like the fourth best selling game of the year so far. Um, had a huge first month. But it's interesting. Do you think that with these types of games as a service games, is it is it even worth it to try to attempt a sequel in the same generation? Oh, right. Yeah, I think it's very risky. Well, uh. I would say yes if if it was like right at the start of a generation, mm-hmm. and then you know maybe like three quarters of the way through. But I don't know. I think yeah, yeah. Ill said it's risky. I think it it is because. Yeah, I mean, even if you do it near the end, you risk people just being like, well, I'm just going to wait till next gen. So, yeah. Mm-hmm. But there's also the thing where it's like, you have those yearly releases already, like uh, Call of Duty, or, where it's like they've been selling gangbusters all this time, even though they haven't mm-hmm. really changed much in their game. Well, it's because they don't support so. them past like a year. Yeah. Uh, Did uh, Destiny have a similar issue? I feel Destiny like... did have a drop off from one versus two, right? Um, and th- and that sort of was one that was very early on in the generation, and then three quarters of the way through, right? Is and but also, I mean, it's research thanks to it's going free to play, right? It, yeah. You know, on on yeah. Twitch and in terms of player base, it's bigger than it's ever been. But I think it's interesting. Um, you know, I th- I think that's almost the the smarter play instead of like making Division Two, make Division free to play three years in a division, you know, and then like make Division Two for the next generation. Yeah. Mm. Um, but it, yeah, it's interesting, right? Because we're now seeing what happens in year four and five of these games, right? Where suddenly you're starting to hit these problems. Mm. Um, a game that's hitting problems, though, a year in, basically, is Fallout 76. Um, <laughs> just because we can't help it dunk on them. They announced a new premium subscription service for their game this week. Fallout first. And uh, the prices are twelve ninety nine a month, $120 a year. Will get you uh, private servers, a item that gives you unlimited storage for your crafting materials, uh, 1,600 atoms, which are like the the premium currency you can use to buy stuff on their store, uh, gear that is specifically from Fallout New Vegas, which feels like a particular slight the week that Outer Worlds is coming out, the game that is by the people that made Fallout New Vegas, yeah. mm. <laughs> uh, and emotes. Totally. So already, whoa! I would say a ripoff. Right? That's what I want. How are they still <laughs> fucking up this badly with this game? Like, I thought they had that whole fucking press conference at E3, like they were trying to make amends or whatever the fuck. Mm-hmm. The, Apparently, uh, they learned of, nothing because the, this is the eternal flame of dumpster fires. <laughs> I don't understand. The 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 NPC update they bragged about at E3 did get delayed out of the year. Oh my um, god. But uh, specifically, not only is it just if you get that, it feels like it's not a lot. Uh, people, when they were going into these private servers, found like a bunch of places looted and a bunch of like bodies already dead. And it turns out they were just reusing instances that they had used for prior servers, right? Where people had already like because the, because they'll um, reinstance the game basically every so often, right? So that like there's still things in it. They just put you in a world that they had already been using, but because everyone had already killed everything your private server had nothing for you to do in it um which is amazing and also the item bewildering holy shit how are these people uh, still in business and the unlimited storage uh resource was losing items so if you put them in there they just disappeared when you came back later so it sounds it sounds like they kind of just thought of that idea did it without actually planning on how to implement that idea properly you just, yes. just shoved a bunch of shit out of there. It's like, okay, let's try this and fix the problem in post. Wait, yeah. besides the fact that the, their new shit doesn't work, fucking $120 for a single fucking game? What the fuck? For, for one year of that game. Is... For, for one, one year. year of that game. Oh my god, fucking, what? Who's paying for this? Wait, was it not $9.99? It was twelve no. nine. no, it was like, what, $12.99? $12.99 a month, $12.99 a month, and then $10 a month if you pay for the year. Oh, yeah, so that okay. adds up to 100. I'm oh, sorry, not 120, 100 dollars. Big fucking whoop! Holy yeah. shit. Um, but like, I mean, still very like that's that's basically fucking two new terrible. video games. Yeah. And the thing is, because because if you look on like the Xbox uh like play charts, right? Because Xbox shows you who's what's the most played games. Fallout 76 is still like 
up there, you know, it's not number one, but like it's in the top 20, right? There's a dedicated audience of people and it sort of looks like they made the decision, okay, we don't have millions of people playing, but we do have a hyper dedicated audience and we think they'll be the type of people that are willing to spend a hundred dollars a year. No. So let's right? squeeze them for everything they've got. Basically. Yeah. Right. And that's the thing that you're just like, man, uh, it's really, really cool. Um, <laughs> Indeed. <laughs> I guess I guess you're right. I do have to ask you again. It's the year of our Lord 2019. Why are we still doing this? <laughs> it's a great question. It's a great question, Brandon. Uh, um, so that is that. There's a you know I don't know what else to say. It was just like, what are you doing? Um, then there is a little piece from an interview. Sorry, Ills, about Pokemon from Junichi Masuda. Uh, he, they're doing press stuff, obviously, for Sword and Shield. This is the thing I thought was most interesting. Because um, they are more than willing to duck questions, but someone, Eurogamer, asked them, hey, uh, let's go last year, right? Are you going to do any more of that? And uh, instead of saying no answer, he said, we don't have any plans for let's go, another let's go game as of now. It's still um, kind of a which I think is interesting. answer in a way. Well, I mean, they said, like, they plan years ahead for Pokemon, right? <laughs> So I think the main thing that this meant for people was there was a lot of concerns that, you know, Pokemon has had the thing of new gen remake, third version, new gen, yeah. right, for a while yeah. now. Um, Sun and Moon sort of, uh, you know, went against that. But people were worried that the gen four remakes would be in the style of Let's Go, right? And people that are big fans of those original games were sort of like, ah, I don't I want it to be like what it was, right? I want it to be this weird amalgamation. Yeah. Like if it was in the um, style of Sword and Shield, nobody would have a problem with that. Yeah. Mm. Um, and so I think it's just interesting uh, because I think that there was a lot of people that were sort of like, is Let's Go the new remake? Uh, and seemingly that's not the answer as of Thank now. goodness. Um, I mean, I was going to say, Brandon, you're surely probably happy about oh, yeah. that. <laughs> uh, I do think it's interesting um, that because people sort of asked, like, Let's Go is such a weird game, right? Mm -hmm. Because there was a lot of concerns on how it will affect the main series and stuff. But I, I sort of, I think it is very much a singular thing, right? You're cashing out on particularly the people that played Go towards the beginning of the game, which is where the original 150 were. Kanto's been remade enough that you can sort of have it be this weird new version of it, right? And people won't be too mad. They'll be more mad that you're going back to Kanto than that you're changing it. Um, and Gen so 1, that, baby! Gen <laughs> 1, baby. And uh, that is, and then, you know, they do it, they try it. I think it did get some new people in. I know of a couple people that tried it for the first time and are now getting Sword and Shield. So I think that they did that experiment, it worked, and they're probably going to move on. Good. Um, no, quote me in two years where they announce Let's Go <laughs> Shinx or whatever. And Let's Go Bidoof and I'm the Fool. No, no, please not. <laughs> uh, uh, I, I do want a Sinnoh remake. Oh, I want that too. Then? Yeah, for sure. I mean, that'd be great. Yeah. Um, but I don't want it in Let's Go style. Yeah, I feel like the further removed I am from Let's Go, the more I realized that I didn't like it. I don't know. It was mm -hmm. just, yeah, it just came and happened and I was done. It just, I, I don't know. Don't do it again. I don't want to do it again. <laughs> um, That's how I feel about every Pokemon game. Yeah. Hey That's how oh. I feel about you, bitch! <laughs> Bring it on! <laughs> Let's go! <laughs> Let's go, uh, let's Yeah, go. let's go! <laughs> Pun intended, bitch! Let's go! Eevee vs. Pikachu right here. I'll uh, see you in Kanto, bro. I'll <laughs> see you. Um, in the uh, other news of companies that have been, you know, not having the best press cycles and poorly kept secrets, uh, Diablo 4 got leaked again this week uh, in an art book where they had a bunch of, art of artwork <laughs> for Diablo 4 in it. Um... <laughs> This That's is great. one of those things. So, I mean, you know, small update uh, to the Blitzchung China stuff two weeks ago. It hasn't gotten much better. Uh, some might say it's gotten worse. Um, you know, they've, they've, they've just continued to ban people generally that have been oh, coming no. out. Um, so, uh, I think it is interesting because this did... Diablo 4 was sort of understood to be the thing at BlizzCon this year, right? And then there's now rumors for a Diablo 2 remastered, which I think is is weird to announce mm. the same time as your new game, right? Um, but yeah. is there any way they don't get, like, booed, right? Because a year ago we were talking about Diablo Immortal, right, where they also got booed <laughs> off the stage. <laughs> yeah. And they, when everyone sort of said, when they announced Diablo 4, what it'll be fine, everyone will forgive them. Still not out. 
got cool. it, it got delayed. Well, um, damn. I don't know, man. Uh, well, Diablo. I will say Diablo Two Remaster sounds amazing, but since Blizzard is just being a fucking bitch, I don't know if <laughs> you know we want to support that. So whatever. Yeah. Uh, I I think it'll be so interesting to see them in front of a live crowd. They've already like starts like started uh quietly making Q and A panels, non Q and A panels for some of their uh stuff. Uh, um, yeah, they've been trying but, to hide themselves quite uh, recently. I mean. Uh, uh, for good reason. Yeah. They've been getting their ass kicked, you know, like, <laughs> that's, yeah. that's why. Um, but that, yeah, so that is sort of, that's the news for this week, by and large, right? There was a lot of stuff, but, you know, uh, it's it's all interesting. Um, but you know what else we've been doing? We've been getting buff, baby. Oh, um, yeah. <laughs> Fuck yeah. Uh, we've been, Ring Fit Adventure is out. We mentioned it last week. We are now a, a, basically a weekend, right? Um and uh who all has it i have it ills has it saf do you have it no i i'm already in shape oh, wow fuck. <laughs> you're like Brandon, a fucking I know, stick figure i know noah has it have you stolen his any, any yeah so he time? has it i have not no not yet i think um, Noah only played once yeah i think so he was playing it last weekend but i don't i mean i don't it's only time i see him on the weekend so i can't say yeah no, I mean I track Busy his guy. progress because I'm keeping tabs Ooh, on all you bitches. Know, not me. Oh god. Oh, damn. Uh, so I think you're the furthest in Ills. I'm, I'm like halfway through World Three. True that. Uh, yeah, I think you just are you on World Four? Or did you just finish World Four? I'm at the end of World Four. Um, there is which I was just game... playing right before this podcast. Who has been getting? He's working on the cardio, getting the diaphragms ready to push out the air. Yeah, of course. Um. This this game is fascinating. I, I keep I keep sort of just like wanting to come back to it both because like it's a fun workout, right? But also mm-hmm. it is more of a workout than I expected. Um, Absolutely, yeah. I mean, I think every time I finish playing, I'm like soaked. <laughs> like mm-hmm. my shirt my shirt is completely soaked. I don't know what to do. <laughs> well, you're going DBZ style. You're wearing weighted training clothes along with it. Yeah, I'm wearing a weighted vest and like weighted ankle baits or whatever yeah, that, don't mm-hmm. worry about that Bill is going to take off his strap and it's just going to make a huge impact like Rock Lee did that one time um, <laughs> I mean they're off right now so no <laughs> I'm not going um, super fast not, not co- you know we give it a week um, I do think it's interesting the RPG elements right of, of the game how they interact with the workout elements because th- there is normally I'm an item hoarder in RPGs, right? I save the Mega Elixirs for the final boss. So I don't even use them there. Mm-hmm. Um, but in this game, suddenly I'm like, you know, I might die if I don't use an item, but I also want to like save this smoothie that you use, right? But if I die, I'm going to have to do like an additional 60 <laughs> squats. Yeah. <right? laughs> oh, man. Suddenly yeah. I'm thinking it through. I'm like, ah, no, I'm going to I'm going to use it. I'm going to use it. I got to because because I'm I don't want to die uh, both literally in the game and in real life. Mm-hmm. Um. That is a punishing right. game. I mean, it it, some of those boss fights are actually, like, really tough. Like, I remember the, the boss of World 3. Like, he kicked my ass the first time I fought him. I had to go back and, like, grind, which is, Aww. you know, actually felt like grinding. Yeah. That's the thing. <laughs> I love to grind in a lot of RPGs. It's much harder to grind when you're the one doing the actual grind. Yeah. <laughs> oh, man. I, I really like, like, how this game makes me feel about cardio like i feel way more incentivized to actually like run around and do like knee lifts and mm-hmm. uh yeah all that stuff like it, it feels rewarding in that way so, yeah yeah and, and doing things better right like you do more damage it's sort of like an action command thing in paper mario but like if you if you if you squat further you do more damage right and you can mm-hmm. there's the good little feedback of your hair lighting on fire and it uh you know, I'm a person that can sometimes with my workouts, you you can get lazy, right? When you're like tired. But when I'm mm-hmm. like, well, I'm going to have to fight this enemy again. I'm not getting lazy. I'm still going as far down as I did early on because I don't want exactly. to don't wanna die. Because, you, yeah, you can die. <laughs> you can yeah. definitely die. And um, the, the one thing I will say about some of the exercises is that the sensor can get off, uh, like, uh, you know, off the, the place where you originally put it. Like, it'll move mm-hmm. around. So sometimes you have to adjust it. And that part can be kind of annoying. Like it won't read your squat perfectly if you're yeah. like if it's in the wrong part of your thigh. But I mean, it's it's not that big of a deal. 
Yeah, they very much want it like center middle of your thigh. And so if yeah. it's not there, they'll think, oh, he's not bending down at all. And you're like, I'm yeah. on the floor, dude. Yeah, yeah, exactly. Um, I've had that happen to me many times, and it's yeah. exhausting, to say um, the least. Also, I really like the art's direction and the style in the game. Really cool. Yeah, it looks Using great. the Breath of the Wild engine. Pretty pretty hilarious. The true Breath of the Wild, too. <laughs> I'm looking forward to seeing uh, both those characters, Drago and... Uh, what's her name? Oh, it's just your name. Just, the, yeah. And Rhea. Yeah, the main character in Smash. They look so good. You know, people joke she's going to be a Wii Fit Trainer Echo, but you, you can have your whole move set. There's, there's a whole separate thing that you're doing in that video game. Yeah. Um, <laughs> which is pretty cool. So what type of um, exercises is it that you're just doing? Is it just like... There are a ton of exercises. Yeah, so you're just working on your cardio? Is it like some sort of bodybuilding stuff? or like? So you 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 jog, right, when you're going running through the level itself, but you hit enemies, right? right. Mm-hmm. And there are four categories. Help me if I forget any. There is upper body, which is red. There's red. lower body, which is blue. There's blue. yoga, which is green. And like abdominals, which is yellow. Yes. Um, and after World... Two, you unlock enemies are color coded. So if you use the same color attack on them that they are, they'll take more damage. Um, and so like the ones you start out with, for example, is like squats, um, like upper arm, uh, like you put the ring above your head and press, you squeeze the ring like together. A, yeah, yeah. Uh, you press, press over your head. Yeah. Uh, there's a sitting pose chair, and then there's like sitting on the ground and doing like crunches, like bringing your knees up to your chest, basically. Right. Yeah. Um, yeah. And and depending on you, they ask you for your age and how intense you want it to be and your weight when you start out, and that determines how many reps you do per attack. Um, and so, like, I do, like, 21, right, per thing. Mm-hmm. Um, and sometimes it can take three attacks to kill an enemy. So you're doing, I mean, you know, if you do, like, squats two of those three times, you're doing 40 squats an enemy. Yeah. Um, which can very quickly get tiring, right? And the game <laughs> sort of tells you, like, hey, don't overexert yourself. Come back tomorrow. Uh, well, I've been playing, now. like, well, like, the first time I played, I only played, like, seven minutes, and then after that, I played, like, 17, so I'm trying to, like, up it, like, mm-hmm. so right now, I'm, like, up to, like, 30 minutes a session, mm-hmm. so, oh. like, I, I think that's the right way to approach the game, like, don't try to go too hard, too fast, mm-hmm. you know, you'll you'll burn yourself out if you do. Um, also, really cool, uh, like you said, I mean, like, I've noticed this week, like, day one or day two, like, my knees were kind of, they were, I was feeling, I was like, oh, man, like, the rest of the day, I was, like, walking a little bit weirder, because I would don't do a ton of squats in my day to day but like by like day four i was like hey man i want to i want to get when i get home i want to like do the ring fit i want to i want to i want to keep up on it um Mm -hmm. in a way that i don't oftentimes with workout routines where i'm sort of dragging myself to do it yeah Um, yeah i i mean i feel like it's a great motivator like mm -hmm. i I really like i was looking forward to this game a lot because this whole year i've been like injured so much and like i've gained weight so this was the time I was going to get back into it. And like, I, I, you know, I'm really happy for the way it is. Mm-hmm. And like all the like the equipment is like super sturdy. Like, I think the ring is awesome. Yeah, I was really surprised at how like one, how much, you know, it feels firm, right? Like when you're pushing in on it, like you can get it to bend, but like you never feel like it's a, a going to break or be like it's not pushing back on you. Yeah. Right. Like if you hold it there for like five seconds, you'll be like. You're, you can feel your arms start to shake a little bit. Yeah, it gives um, you a good amount of tension. It's, it's really well well done. Yep. So, really cool video game. Um, you know, it, it was good. It's a good way to prep for cardio for when you have to run all up and down your streets because it's going to be Halloween week, baby. Ooh. Ooh. Uh, trick or treating, right? You got to burn off the candy calories and ring fit. Or but- don't eat them at all. <laughs> well, I mean, come on, you got to. It's Halloween. Yeah, you got to. Uh, it was fuck that. But I wanted. I, I figured, not. Why not now? Only time of the year where Halloween comes around once a year. Talk about some uh, some games you think fit well for the season, right? Obviously, horror is the first place you go to, right? Mm-hmm. But uh, sort of, I think that Halloween. You know, there's a mix of scary and spooky that I think makes the ha- yeah. the season, right? You know, some of the things just like, oh, there's just a cartoon ghost. That's just that's just spooky, right? It's not scary. But then there's like, hey, man, I watched a man get dismembered by Jason Voorhees. <laughs> that's that's more scary. Um, so uh, does anyone have any like particular games that they sort of think, you know, if someone's looking to celebrate the season in these last couple of days would be a good fit? Oh, man. I mean, if you have Game Pass, there is that uh, uh, one game. It's like. My neighbor. What was it called? Me and Brandon. Secret Secret neighbor. I think. Yeah. 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 It's coming out on Game Pass. Yeah. Yeah. So you can. What is? What do you do in Secret Neighbor? 
it's literally you, you play one of um, several children and you get different abilities uh-huh. depending upon the child you pick. And one of the children is actually the neighbor in disguise. And he's a big fucking weird ass pedophile looking motherfucker that tries okay. to chase right, after you. Uh, okay. And uh, what it is, is just you're running around the house trying to collect clues and trying to get uh, uh, some sort of item. Well, keys, sorry. To, you have to get keys. Your door. friend is locked in the basement. He's kidnapped yeah. your friend. You have to free them. Oh, this game is dark. This is a spinoff of Hello. It Nerd, is, right? Yeah, it's a, is, yeah, it's a co-op spinoff. That's really. I always like when. I mean, there's sort of like a lot, several of these now, right? Like there's there's the Friday the Thirteenth game, and there's um, I forget that other one, Dead by Daylight, right? Yeah. Where it's like four of you, like you and your friends, versus one of them being a monster. Yeah, yeah. I think those are well suited for you know. It's fun to get to be the villain yeah. mm-hmm. sometimes in video yeah. games. It's a pretty fun game. Yeah. It's um, if I can do one, also on Xbox Game Pass, speaking of, I believe it still Shout is. Out. There's a game called Layers of Fear. Mm-hmm. That's, um, it, it which was. Is, it, was, it, was, it was free with gold at one point. Uh, that. Uh, but this is a really cool game. I played it like two years ago. I watched one stream it and then I played it myself. Um, where you're, your dad was a painter who went crazy and you go back to his... To, to the house where he lived and you and you try to figure out what happened to him and it's very much his first person it's very much sort of in the same vein as like amnesia the dark descent or like different games like that but there's a lot less of like a monster chasing you and just a lot more like you know you'll look around you'll turn around suddenly a wall's there that wasn't there before suddenly an image will change in a way that like uh has a good amount of you know it's the psychological kind of horror right rather than the like you're going to get stabbed in the face by a freaky monster man. Hmm. Um, but it's a very cool video game. The game on... goes on sale pretty often. No, it, it's free on EGS right now. Oh. Ooh. Damn. Pick that up. Wow. Right good, good pick, then. Uh, yeah. You guys got any? Yeah, man. Yeah. Um, I'll go ahead, Els. Go ahead, Brent. I'll, I'll go last. All right. All right. <laughs> All right. Um, well, I'm just going to mention two games I intend on playing. Uh, which is uh, the Evil Within. Ooh, good one. Oh, I, I look forward to playing I that, like that game. soon, yeah. soonish. Mm-hmm. And uh, Resident Evil Seven, two games I missed. Ooh, yeah. Oh, Even yeah. better one. Mm-hmm. Really good so, horror. I had... God, I, I had a list of games, right? And RE Two was on my list, right? Because I mean, that's also just like mm-hmm. another one of those games. Because our Resident Evil, maybe because I just played so many of them, Resident Evil have this nice mix of like scary, but also like kind of cozy, especially with the older games, right? Like. Maybe it's just the safe rooms, but like, I can imagine myself like wrapping up in a blanket. You play RE2, and you're like, "Man, I'm a little spooked, but also like I'm having a good time." Yeah, because it's they're um, good gameplay wise too. You know, they're they're spooky, but they yeah. play well. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. I mean, as long as you um, avoid six, that's okay. <laughs> yeah, yeah. So that's Eternal Struggle. It's, the, seven is such a good game. It honestly uh, is. It's I really like seven. Yeah, it it does an amazing job, and uh, the family they they are. They're great. They're fucking. Yeah. Mm-hmm. They're they're not good people, but they're good. <laughs> they're good horror movies. Or, well, not movie, but I guess they're kind of like tropes, right? For horror villains. Uh, but yeah. they work really well, and I I love that game. Yeah, really cool DLC for that game too, where you get to play as what's his name, Joe Baker, I think. Oh, right? the uncle. And yeah. like, yeah, yeah, super cool. Um, also another game that's going to be free on EGS next week, right? So it'll be after Halloween, but still in the season. Costume Quest 1 is going to be fun. Oh, That's dog, that was one of my games I was going to talk about. Oh, damn. Yeah, man. That game rules. Yeah. You, you can say, go ahead. Yeah, double fine. Um, Costume Quest 1 and 2. Uh, saw little RPGs. Um, not very long either. So they're, you know, they're a good, you know, week of Halloween game to, to bust out, you know. Um, they're, they're basically, you're, you play as a bunch of kids uh, who, it's on Halloween night and Mm-hmm. You go around and it's a it's a turn based RPG. When you get into battles, whatever costumes your kids are wearing, uh, they transform into those in the battles, and mm-hmm. it, it's pretty fun. And you can go around, you collect new costumes throughout the game, so you so you can mm-hmm. change through new costumes to get basically new characters for your party. Um, and you know you you got a lot of your standards in there. You got the a uh, robot and. Uh, you know, ghosts and and pumpkin man, mm. but you you have some unique ones too, and it's it's a fun time. All all the monsters have different abilities, and it's kind of it, from what I remember, it's almost like got the Mario RPG kind of the uh, action command. Yeah, action element. commands. You press the buttons at the right time to do more damage. 
Um, it's a it's a fun, solid game. It's short, easy, but you know it's got a lot of charm and it fits with the season perfectly. Um, I, I definitely recommend yeah. it. I just re- there was a Buffy the Vampire Slayer episode that was just like that. <laughs> really? Nah. Maybe that's where they yeah. got some of the inspiration from. Um, another Maybe. game I, I want to talk about too. Um, it's not really your standard. You don't think about this game. I don't think when you think of like horror games or spooky uh, games in general. But it's got, I will say, when you play it, it's got an eerie vibe to it. Uh, and that game is Killer7. Um, oh, sure. Yeah. You know, it's yeah. you know, it's kind of it's kind of creepy when you play it. And uh, you play as um, it's basically seven different assassins um, who are, like, manifestations of one guy um, mm-hmm. whose name is Harmon Smith. And he had all of them, their last name is Smith. So he's got all these different, like, manifestations of these different uh, serial killers or assassins, basically. Um, mm-hmm. And you go around, and I'll tell you, this this game is... It's very creepy when you play it, like just talking like you fight these things. I can't even remember what they're called, um, but they're they're creepy. Like they're like these yeah. weird things with like one eye and they have a weak point. You have to. It's a weird game. It's just such a weird game to explain. It's on rails. So you control your character mm-hmm. on rails and you can go into first person when you go into combat. And all each mm-hmm. assassin has like a different uh, a weapon and abilities that they can use throughout the levels. So it mixes up the gameplay, and they ha- each have like cool personalities. I really liked it. I re- I like all the different assassins. Like, um, one of my favorite ones is uh, this this blind dude, and he has dual pistols, mm-hmm. and he he listens to like headphones. Like his special thing is that he can just um you know hear extremely good because he's blind, and yeah yeah no, he's really cool i like his animations he he like lets the clips out and then he like flips them up and kicks them in with his legs with his feet i mean mm-hmm. uh to reload yeah. the clips it's just really cool i i like all the assassins mm-hmm. i like all the i like the yeah. gameplay's fun and uh it's very unique um and I'll, I'll tell you if you play it alone at night you're gonna be a little creeped out mm-hmm uh-huh. Worth mentioning is Suda fifty one. Suda fifty one. Right? So if you, I think he said you like his game. One of the thing, favorite things I, I remember reading about him talking about this game was that he said I, I wanted to make a game that was really unique and has never been made before, and I don't think I could ever make a game like this ever again. No, and he tried to kind of with Killer is Dead, and I don't think it captured that same sort of vibe yeah. to it. I still like it, but I think yeah, it's very singular yeah. in a way that um, is is. Obviously, very interesting. Mm-hmm. Uh, worth mentioning about Suda. Speaking of Suda and Swery Fifty One, the guy who Suda Fifty One and Swery Sixty Five, they both love their numbers. dudes with the numbers. Um, uh, they uh, they announced that they're working on a horror game to game oh, yeah. together called Ho- Hotel Barcelona. Mm-hmm. Love this. They said uh, they, they were at this panel. They said, uh, "Oh yeah, I mean Devolver Digital's publishing." And uh, oh, is this guy working on it? Let me call him. And he just calls in the middle of the panels, like, "You want to work on this game?" And the guy's like, "Yeah, I guess." <laughs> And then, uh, and then Devolver Digital went on to Twitter and was like, "We didn't hear that we were developing this game. You need to call us, dude. <laughs> like, what are you talking about?" That's it. <laughs> Which is the exact way those two guys would announce a video game, um, and it will be horror. So. Speaking of sweaty, there is another game that I want to talk about that was really, really good. Came out this month last year, and it's the missing JG Mag Mag yes. and the Island of Memories. That's a great horror puzzle game, and it's literally just. Mm-hmm. Um, you're, you're a teenage girl, you go to an island with a friend, the friend goes missing, and then you solve puzzles by just tearing your body apart and just trying to uh, uh, progress further. And it's a really, really good horror game. Like, it's beautiful yeah. and it's fucking chilling at times with, like, the sound effects. It's really nice. Mm-hmm. Mm. Uh, and that then... kind of reminds me of a game I, I played recently. Uh, Oxenfree? Sort of a similar yes. thing. Yes, well, Oxenfree well, is another to... one. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Guess what's also coming out this week? After Party, another game that's got good Halloween mm-hmm. vibes, right? You you die, you go to on hell. Game Pass. Yeah. yeah, you die, you go to hell. Yeah, on Game Pass, uh, and and you you got to drink the way your way out of hell by uh, beating the devil and and various yeah, drinking. Yeah, that game looks unique. So <laughs> I definitely want to play that game. Lots uh, of good yeah. Halloween games. Yeah, yeah, uh, and then also I just want to give a brief shout out because I always think when it's cool when they do this when games do just halloween events right like borderlands is doing a halloween event right now yeah. destiny is to overwatch right? love of course mm-hmm. how, how can i forget 
uh, always cool just to these games that you already play. You get to be in a little bit, you know, special in the season kind of stuff. Uh, so yeah, I mean, obviously, try not to spook yourself into a heart attack, because I mean, gotta make it mm-hmm. to Halloween. Play Alien Halloween. Isolation too. While uh, you're at it. Oh, oh yeah. yeah, good game. Good That's good a very good chat. <laughs> yeah. Uh, you know, we've talked about a lot of good games though. Play Blood- Bloodborne as How well. About- That's a great horror game. Yeah. All yeah, we could go all day, but we uh, could. Yeah. <laughs> we could. I do want to do one more, another spooky but not scary game. Zombies Hate My Ooh. Neighbors. Oh, you know where you could. Uh, you know where 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 else we've discussed Zombies Hate oh, My I Neighbors. Know. Uh, where on the list? The list. The list. Follow along in the paste bin below as we add another game to this ever-growing amalgamation of good, bad, and ugly, up to a hundred and forty games Ooh. now. Make it 141. Ooh. Brandon, what do you got for Man, us? Man, I was going to add a spooky game, but I think we talked about every spooky game that, that there is. No, I'm just kidding. There's plenty of spooky <laughs> games out there. <laughs> um, Silent Hill, you're out of here. <laughs> but the, but uh, I think the rest of the spooky games, uh, I'm not sure if you guys have played them, and you know, I'm not going down that path. Uh, so I'm just going to take a game right <laughs> off my bounty board. You know, That's the reason why we have it here. Um, and I'm going to go with beautiful joe henshin a go-go baby it's time where i love this game nice uh Uh beautiful joe if you don't know what what it is it is a uh it's basically a side-scrolling beat-em-up it's an action platformer uh developed Mm -hmm. by clover studios uh they -hmm. are basically known as platinum nowadays um, and uh-huh. this game was published by capcom who still owns the rights to it and god damn it please just please uh, do team something. up with Clover. <laughs> team up with Platinum. Let's do it. Beautiful Joe three. I'm I'm waiting. Uh, but I'm waiting because Beautiful Joe one was a great game. I really liked it. Um, it came out on the GameCube originally and was uh, eventually ended up on the PS2, which pisses me off to this day because it was supposed to be a GameCube exclusive like Resident Evil four. Uh, but cut your head off with the chainsaw. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, exactly. Um, but yeah, it just came out on PS2 and uh, and um, the GameCube. I don't think it's ever been on anything else though, which is kind of a shame because uh, they got a, they got a hit on their hands and they got a sequel. Uh, Beautiful Joe, you might know him also from like uh, Tasunoko versus Capcom on the Wii, or uh, as most recently as uh, Marvel Marvel versus Capcom Ultimate. No, not Ultimate uh, Three. Infinite. Yeah. No, three? 3. Ultimate Marvel vs. Capcom oh, 3. I think he was in the original one, too. Um, yeah. But yeah, he's in that game. Uh, so, Beautiful Joe, you're basically a, a dude, uh, just a normal-ass dude, kind of uh, Fred Durst-looking. and Normal, just an everyday, everyday Joe. Everyday Joe, and he loves movies and, and superheroes. Uh, and Captain Blue. he ends up going to the movies, and the movies uh, suck him in. He becomes a superhero. His favorite favorite uh superhero is captain blue is that his name yeah yes. captain blue it's all he's an old guy he's been doing superhero movies he's like clint eastwood of superheroes I, i'm pretty sure you know uh so he's been doing it mm-hmm. forever uh and he's his favorite and he gets sucked into the movies and it's super cool it, if you've ever seen this game in action it's cell shaded uh it looks it looks really nice for the time and it probably holds up pretty well that today great. um yeah, it does. yeah. If they put this game in HD, man, it would look really cool. Um, it, it, you play through each level is like a movie, and it's kind of like each one is almost like a parody on a different movie. Yeah. And you go through the levels, uh, just like I said, it's a beat 'em up. So uh, you punch, you kick your way through uh, hordes of enemies till you get to the boss at the end. Uh, but the special thing here is Joe has uh, beautiful powers. Uh, he can. VFX. VFX, that's what it is. So he can slow down time to dodge stuff and, um, you know, carefully, uh, you know, place his attacks. Or he can speed up and do a barrage of punches super fast. He can zoom in to do more damage. Uh-huh. And it's it's really fun. All those things added together make a really cool um, and unique uh, beat-em-up, you know? It's uh-huh. it's interesting. They, they play off of it in different ways that you have to use the powers to, like, traverse through the levels. And it's honestly, it's a good time. I I fucking love this game. I love the music, the style, the art direction, the gameplay. I played through it a ton of times when it came out. You know, this was back when I had more time in my hands. But still, um, I, I like I love this game a lot. Mm-hmm. Uh, I don't know what you guys uh, so, think about yeah, it, but yeah. 
it's 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 an interesting game for sure. Um, sometimes I felt it was like kind of frustrating at times. Like it, it's pretty hard. Can be hard. Like, it's yeah. way harder than I thought. It's got it that be. platinum style before they were platinum, you know. Yeah, yeah, and it, it, uh, I, I think it takes yeah. a little bit of adjusting. I mean, it's sort of like a lot of platinum games. It takes a little bit of adjusting to get sort of used yeah. to it. But once you do get used to it, there's a lot of fun to be mm-hmm. had. Uh, the way that Joe runs is is so funny because you're because he's very he very much moves at like a two D beat em up speed. But because there's not like really a backwards and a foreground or background, you think of him more as like a 2D platforming type character, mm-hmm. right? But like, no, he moves way slower across the screen, right? So mm. you sort of have to get used to that was, was the first thing that I noticed when I played it back in the day. But I mean, by the time I beat it, I had a great time. Um, so where would you want to put it on the list? Whew, it's hard. It's hard. Um, obviously, I have a little bit of a bias towards this game, right? Because I love it. Um, mm mm-hmm. Looking at the list, I'm thinking somewhere maybe in the in the fifties or sixties, you know, that kind of area. Okay. All right. That's a huge range. <laughs> it is. <laughs> it is. It is. Um, uh, so here, so here's what okay. I was looking at, right? I was looking at, and and the sort of the place where my eyes sort of settled was around Kid Icarus and Ghost Trick. Hmm. I, I uh because I think that like. Both of them, I think I, mm, mm, do I put it above or below Ghost Trick is sort of my question, right? Yeah. Um, uh, I would put it below Ghost Trick. I think I would too. Um, would you put it below Alundra? Oh, yeah. I mean, I think Alundra needs to move up, so. Mm-hmm. I, don't I mean, I would put it, good metric. once again, this is a personal biases thing, but like, I would personally put it below Stardew. But, uh, I think it's, I think it is better than Chibi Robo. Yeah. I think it's, be- at, at very least, it's better than Kirby's Epic Yarn. Yeah, yeah, that's fair. Um, I will say that the the bosses in this game, are, like they take some strategy, like they take some. You have to really learn how yeah. to fight them. Yeah. Mm-hmm. So and they're all really yeah. unique. And, they are. You can't. It's not really, just. You can't just run in there and start punching them. No way. No. No <laughs> way. Yeah. Yeah. So I mean, yeah, it's it's um, it's it's very uh intense. Like sometimes, like you you really have to learn the fights. Mm-hmm. So. If you like that kind of game, it's it's pretty cool. Yeah, I I was just really drawn to to the game really by the art style, but then you know the gameplay is really what hooked me. And it's and the humor, and it's humor. Really yeah, it doesn't like, take yeah. itself serious at all. You know, um, it's very campy and funny. Hmm. Uh, yeah, I minimum I'm thinking you definitely above Epic Yarn. Um, personally, I would probably put it. You put it above Phoenix, right? Yeah, I mean, I. This is just me, you know. I'd probably put it above uh, Kid Icarus, but I don't. Because Kid Icarus should go down. <laughs> that's why. I don't know. Kid Icarus is in a pretty decent spot. Don't let Muzzy hear this part of the podcast. <laughs> <laughs> he doesn't listen. Oh, fair enough. Uh... Yeah. Feel free to talk shit uh... about Kid Icarus. <laughs> <laughs> I, I, mean, I would put it below, even if, so. I also put it below Phoenix, right? Probably as well as Stardew, but like, I mean, I would get it if you don't, if you would put it higher. But, um, well, we all recently played Snatcher. What do you feel about that? Um, mm. yeah, I don't know. I I would I would, like Snatcher a lot, but mm-hmm. I think I'd put it uh, personally. I'd put it above Snatcher. I mean, to be fair, I haven't played Beautiful Joe, you know, in years. Uh, but. Mm-hmm. Well, I, I recently yeah. played it, and um, I think I would put it above Snatcher. Yeah. Okay. Snatcher I'll put it below Ghost Trick. falls off at the end. Real weird. Yeah. So, I mean, I'm okay with putting it below Ghost Trick. I am yeah. too. Okay. So, sounds good. Right. There we go. There we go. We did it. Uh, that is number uh, 58 on the list. Beautiful Joe. Surrounding it. 56. Kidigris Uprising. 57. Ghost Trick. Phantom Detective. As I said, 58, Beautiful Joe, 59, Snatcher, and 60, Phoenix Wright, Ace Attorney. That is uh, You, you the know list what a couple of those week. games are that you talked about, right? They're on the Game Club. Ooh, Ooh la la. Uh, We're so still doing that. <laughs> Apparently. <laughs> uh, so that is, the, uh, that is the list. That is the podcast for this week. I want to thank you all for listening, of course. Uh, while I do the plugs, 
Uh, Saf, do you want the final phrase? No. You didn't. You didn't get to participate much. <laughs> I'm, dude. No, I don't have anything to say on the final list. Okay. No, I mean, I can right. just say this. Uh, <laughs> no, no, no. Uh, Brandon. Uh, I got it last week. Uh, you can take it away, else or no, um, Will. We'll give it to you. How about that? Okay. When was the last time you got it? I can't. Um. Remember, so. Who knows. Uh, so I guess I'll do the plugs and then just go straight into it. So that is, like I said, the podcast for this week. If you made it this far, hopefully that means you enjoyed it. So if you would go on to your podcast service of choice and give it the highest rating on whatever it is, that would mean the whole world to us, of course. Uh, what it would also mean the world is following us on, uh, on those services on twitter.com slash jump up supercast at facebook.com slash jump up supercast on Instagram, all of those things and more. Uh, YouTube. YouTube, where we upload these podcasts as well, if you uh, prefer to listen on there. Um, that is, of course, uh, all things we appreciate very much, and we appreciate, once again, you listening. Um, and for my final phrase, uh, so this, uh, we talked a few weeks ago, a few months ago, about Game Informer letting a lot of people go, right? About almost half their staff. Uh, one of the people has left Game Informer uh, this week uh, named Ben Hansen. And ben Hansen is a guy that uh, has... Uh, hosted their podcast for for years is a person that i look up to a lot as a host of a podcast he does a great job great questions great prep work um and now he's doing his his own thing with a lot of former game informer people called min max and so if you like gaming podcasts if you want people that have a lot of insight you know years of experience uh covering video games i would check that out on their patreon and on their youtube uh that is men with two ends max